of this fountain so rich and sweet. Come to this fountain. Cast thou poor soul at thy Savior's feet. Plunge in today and be made complete. I'm singing glory to, oh, I'm singing glory to, singing glory to his name, oh, there, I'm singing glory to, Oh, I'm singing glory to I'm singing glory to Oh, there to my heart I'm singing glory to my heart was the blood of blood I'm singing glory to
Thank you for this offering. God, thank you for giving us time to give and, and money to be a blessing. God, we ask that you help us bless the community and reach the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. say amen. Let the people of God say amen again. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. Would you join me today in standing um, as we prepare today for uh, not only our responsive reading, but following our responsive reading, we will have a time of congregational prayer. You can look around and tell that it's Alabama A&M homecoming weekend. You can also tell that it's fall break, amen. But since we came to church, we ought to worship God for he's been good to us, amen. And we come to praise and bless his name. Our scripture today is found in Ephesians, the second chapter, beginning at verses 1 through 9. If you are uh, there, uh, let us all say amen. And you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Among whom also we had our conversation in time past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by the nature the children of wrath, even as others. And 
have raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Let us read it together. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. As we're standing today, church, I want to invite you um, to uh, the throne of grace that you would come, uh, those who are desiring a prayer, that you would come at this time to the altar. Uh, for the Lord certainly hears and honors our prayers when we seek his face uh, in prayer. So I invite you today to come. If not, um, if you grab a hand beside you uh, somewhere uh, that we might seek the Lord in prayer. Amen. We have some who are dealing with bereavement, some that are dealing with sickness. We are praying for uh, Brother uh, Nakel Stewart, a son of Elder V. Castle Stewart, who is uh, in the hospital in Nashville and uh, is dealing with uh, sickness. And we want to lift him up today in prayer. Amen. Uh, let us pray together. Father, we thank you for the privilege of prayer. Father, that we don't have to go through a priest, we don't have to go uh, through a, an unordinary means, but rather we can go straight to you and we can call you for ourselves. We thank you that you've given us the privilege of calling you Father. And with you being a father, that means that you are one who provides for us. You're one that protects us. You're one that watches over us. And for that, Father, we say thank you. Lord, we thank you for the gift of another day. We recognize, Father, that some went to bed last night that didn't wake up this morning. And so for the privilege of just being on your wake-up list, Lord, we say thank you. Uh, Father, we, uh, we confess to you that we have fallen short of your will. Uh, that we've uh, undoubtedly come short of your glory. We have all sinned, and Father, we recognize that the wages of sin is death. But Father, we thank you that the gift that you give us is eternal life. And so, Father, we confess to you today our sins, asking that you would wash us anew by the precious blood of the Lamb. And Father, as we come to your table today, may we not take it for granted that which you've done in our lives. Lord, we just want to say thank you. And Father, some have come this morning with their own challenges and burdens. But Father, we know that you are a burden bearer. You are the God that will help us tread through the mountains. You're the God that can even remove the mountains. And for that, Father, we say thank you. Uh, we recognize, Father, that some are standing in need of healing. And Lord, you are a healer. You are the great physician. And so, Father, we pray even now healing over my brother, over my sister. And, 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 and some, Father, are, are, are dealing with their own challenges financially and spiritually and emotionally. But, but Father, you promise that you would never leave us, neither would you forsake us. And so, Father, we're holding on to that promise. And, Father, we, we, we believe that you're a God who is able to bring us through. So we trust you today. Uh, we leave these things before you, knowing that there is power in the blood of the Lamb. And so, Father, we thank you. Everything may not be right, but, Father, we say thank you. There may still be some things around us that we don't quite understand, but Lord, we still say thank you. You're still worthy of our praise. You're still worthy of our glory. And so we lift up the name that is above every name, for we believe that one day at that name, every knee has got to bow and every tongue will confess that you are Lord. So we give you worship today. We give you praise today. 
Father, we recognize this morning that many are away and many are traveling, but, but since we're in the house today, Father, we just want to tell you thank you. Thank you, Lord. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. And for that, Father, we give you the glory and we give you the praise. It is in the strong name of Jesus that we make these requests according to your will. We pray this in your name and let the people of God say amen. Amen, 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 amen. 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 Let the people of God say amen. And as our worshipers are coming in, we are uh, preparing my brothers and sisters to honor God uh, with the tithe and to honor him for what he has called us to do. Amen. Amen. Our choir is going to come and bless us, and then our deacons are going to get situated uh, that we may honor God with what we have uh, received. Join me in a word of prayer as we prepare to give on today. Father, every good and perfect gift is from above. Now, Father, we've already given today to our community uh, to bless those that are in need. Uh, but now we honor you with what we have received, for you told us to put you first in all things. And so today, Father, we honor you with the time, knowing that your word is true, uh, that you will do what you've promised to do uh, in your word. So bless it now. In the name of Jesus, we pray and let God's people say amen.
brothers and sisters, I'm just going to uh, ask that all of our guests who are here worshiping with us for the first time, would you just raise your hand if you're here? Amen. God bless you. God bless you. We are so, we are so glad to have you and have you here worshiping uh, with us on this day. We want to welcome you and thank God for your presence on today. And so, uh, St. Martha, let's do this. Let's stand. Let's greet one another and welcome each other in the love of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's do that on today. Amen. Welcome to St. Bartley, where the people of God are, are called, for the Lord is soon to come. We must, to help everyone, we are people of God. Welcome to St. Bartley, where the people of God are, are called. For the Lord is soon to come. We must to help everyone. We are people of God. One more time, welcome to St. Barney, where the people of God are. Are called for the Lord is soon to come. We must to help everyone. We are people of God, with praise on our lips, with praise on our lips, in the word, the devil under our feet, yes we are, with praise on our lips, and the word, the devil under our feet, yes we are. One more time with praise on our lips and the word, the devil under our feet. Yes, we are. Welcome to St. Bartley, where the people of God are, are called, for the Lord is soon to come. We must to help everyone, we are kingdom building, kingdom building, kingdom building, kingdom building, people of God, people of Amen. Let the people of God say amen. 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 We praise God. Now listen, church, this is kind of a little off Sunday for us, so y'all bear with us today. Amen. Uh, we don't have our video announcements today, but I believe we can read. Amen. So just read your announcements that are in the program uh, on today. I do want to remind you that we are gearing up on the 31st uh, for our fall festival where we are looking to uh, impact uh, our children and youth of this community. We're partnering with Village of Promise, and so I want you to have that in your in your minds as well. On this uh, on today, there will be um, a uh, funeral service that will take place of Brother Eason that will take place today at two o'clock. Um, people have already been contacted that know to be in place, but I would just ask that you all would keep uh, the Eason family in your prayers as well. Amen. Our choir is coming to prepare us for the word of God. Just look at somebody and say, neighbor, wake up. Amen.
the people of God say amen. Oh, to be kept by Jesus. Uh, the song says that he will keep you in perfect peace. That's what the scripture promises, that everything doesn't have to be perfect for you to have perfect peace. I, I thank God for his peace. Is there, is there anybody here just thankful that God will keep you? Come on, he'll keep your mind. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. Join me in standing today. Join me for a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for what you've done in our lives. We thank you for the ways that you have made and the doors that you have opened. But Father, we need you to speak to us today as only you can speak. Sit me down that you might stand up in my body. Use me in spite of me is my prayer. And we will give you all of the glory. We will give you all of the praise. It is in the name of Jesus we pray and let God's people say amen. 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 Well, as you stand and grab your Bibles, uh, I, I, I've learned to follow uh, the Holy Spirit, and I'm going to have to pick up my theories on next week because uh, the Lord is leading me somewhere else this morning. And I want to invite your attention to Psalm number 124. Amen. And, uh, but he will keep you. He, he will. He will keep you. He will keep you. pick up next week but but today this this is on my heart and I just got it. Uh, Psalm number 124 and it, it reads like this if it had not been the Lord who was on our side now may Israel say if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side when men rose up against us, then they had swallowed us up quick. When their wrath was kindled against us, then the waters had overwhelmed us. The stream had gone over our soul. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. Blessed be the Lord who, is, who has not given us over as a prey to their teeth. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we are escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Let me read that again. Our help is in the name of the Lord who have made heaven and earth. Amen. I want to talk today from the subject, old to be kept. Old to be kept. My brothers and sisters, in our text this morning, it's a unique text in that it is a song that the 
the people of Israel would sing on their way home from journeys and wars that the Lord had brought them through. And is it not unique, my brothers and sisters, that this song written by King David, we still sing the first verse today. If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side. And we added a question to it. Tell me, where would I be? Really the point that David is making is that as they take a cursory look back upon their past experiences, their past challenges, and their past obstacles, they have come to this conclusion that without the hand of God intervening in the affairs of their lives, then their lives would have been led to a pitiable destruction. My brothers and sisters, this song is unique in that it causes one to take a look behind you. As much as music today focuses on us looking in the present and looking in the future, this text invites us, my brothers and sisters, that before you take a look in front of you, you ought to take a look behind you. Don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with being positive about the future. Matter of fact, there's nothing worse than being around people who are negative about the future. You tell them, I'm trying to get myself together, they say, we'll see how long that lasts. You tell them, I'm trying to go back to school, they'll tell you it's still hard to find a job in this economy. Uh, you tell them that I have some goals for uh, the next few months and they tell you I don't see that happening. There's nothing worse than being around people that are negative about the future. But the truth is, my brothers and sisters, we do serve a God who's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above everything that we could ever ask or think. And so you ought not ever be negative about the future, but this text causes each one of us to come and live with some type of deep gratitude for what God has already done. Come on, this, this is no cheap amen, no cheap emotionalism, or no cheap clap. The, 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 the point of the passage is that everyone ought to be able to look behind you and see how God has been faithful even when you and I have not been faithful to him. That, 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 that God has paid bills when we didn't honor him with our resources. That God has kept back sickness when we didn't thank him for the health that we already had. That, that God has fought battles when we didn't even know that battles were there to be fought. That that God has pulled us out of stuff that, that we couldn't pull ourselves out of. And, and the psalmist says that, that when you have uh, this revelation of what God has done for you in your life, you ought to be able to say, if it had not been. Y'all got to excuse me here because it's, it's a little good to me because I, I've been in some situations that that I couldn't see my way out of, but, but I've come to tell you it wasn't anybody but the Lord. Come on, there's some people here to know that it was the Lord's hand that brought you out of your situation. It was the Lord's hand that kept you in the midst of danger. It was the Lord's hand that held off troubles but that were all around you. And David says that when Israel looks at what God has done, they have to say, all to be kept by him. And the text says, my brothers and sisters, that when you and I consider what God has done for us, you ought to live life with a certain depth of gratitude. You shouldn't always be complaining about how things are not right in your life. You, you not always be looking down and negative because things are not coming together. But you ought to wake up with a joyful spirit. You ought to wake up saying this is the day that the Lord has 
made it, I will rejoice and be glad about it. You, you ought to wake up with a certain sense of it doesn't matter what <laughs> happens today. God is still worthy of my praise and my glory and I will worship him. The text says, my brothers and sisters, that, that, that if you and I, if you and I would really take um, a, a look at what God has done, uh, the first thing the text reveals, my brothers and sisters, is that you will see, um, you will see that God has kept us when there was a possibility that we could have been destroyed. When men rose up against us, they would have swallowed us up alive. Now, if you know Israel's history, then you know that the Lord <coughs> had his hand on them. He blessed them to live in houses they did not build. Uh, to drink water from wells they did not dig. Eat the fruit from vineyards they did not plant. If you know their history, then you know why the psalmist says, Surely the Lord has been good to Israel. But not only did he bless them with possessions, but he also blessed them with protection. For the Israelites were fighting folk. They were at odds with the Egyptians. But then when they crossed the Red Sea and eventually crossed the Jordan, they were fighting against the Hittites and the Amorites and the Jebusites and the Hivites. They were always at battles with someone. The problem is that most of the time their enemies were stronger than them, more craftier than them, had more weapons than them, and had more people than them. And when Israel looks back at the experiences of their lives, they can't help but to testify that we understand that we got the victory, but we also recognize what could have been, what should have been, and what would have been if the Lord didn't step in. Uh, 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 that, that, there's a certain gratitude that you and I ought to live with. Knowing that the same things that have blessed us, the doors that we have been able to walk through, could have been slammed in our faces. That the time you went in the hospital, it was not guaranteed that you were going to come out. That, 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 that the, the, the time you got in the car, that you can be the safest driver in the world, but someone else's foolishness. Could, could take you down a dangerous path. And he says, you ought not ever forget that you could have been destroyed. They say when men rose up against us, they would have swallowed us up uh, alive. And, and, and the truth is, my brothers and sisters, that you may not have you an enemy, but you somebody's enemy. Oh, oh, oh you, you, don't, you don't think you somebody's enemy, no. Uh, uh, you say, well, they ain't done nothing to me. That's, that's because God has had a protective hedge <clears throat> around your life. Because if they had the chance, they would have done something. But, but the text says that, that, that I would have been destroyed if it had not been for the hand of God in my life. And, and this is the same Israel. The same Israel, I told you about them before, the, the same Israel that walked away from God. The same Israel that spent 40 years complaining in the wilderness. The, the same Israel that when God fed them from manna from heaven, they said, oh, we tired of eating this same old manna day after day. Give us something better than this. <clears throat> they missed the miracle that there they were in the wilderness where things don't grow and every day they had something to eat. And sometimes you can look so much at what's wrong in your life that you don't appreciate the blessings that God is providing in your life. And yet in spite of their sinfulness, God kept them. And in, in spite of their lack of faithfulness, God kept them. In spite of their foolishness and their arrogance and their rebellion and their pride and their brokenness and their idolatry and their chasing after God, God continued to keep them. Now, I thought I would have a little bit of help right there because 
whether you know it or not, all of us have some Israelite in us. All of us have some lying and some cheating and some adulterating and, and some foolishness and some greed and some backbiting. But, but thanks be to God that he didn't wipe us out, that he didn't give up on us, but he kept on waking us up in the morning in our right minds with a reasonable portion of health and strength. Is there anybody here that's thankful for what God has done? Come on. Everybody in here is assigned to be guilty. Come on, I wish I had the real church in here. I said everybody in here is guilty. But come let us reason together. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be made whiter than snow. God has been faithful in spite of us. But then... But then, my brothers and sisters, if you recognize how God has kept you, secondly, you'll see that, that not only that, but that God uh, has protected us in some dangerous waters. You see it in verses 3, 4, and 5 when it talks about the proud waters. The proud waters would have gone over our soul. Uh, this is when Israel is at the Red Sea with water in front of them and Pharaoh behind them. And when Israel thinks about how God kept them, they can't help but to think about how they walked through those two walls of water and God held it back. And, 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 I, and I told you before, I'll tell you again, that, that it's a reminder that, 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 that some things you can't go over, you can't go under, but you've got to go through. <clears throat> but the good news is, while we are walking through the dangerous waters, I'm talking to somebody who's dealing with sickness. I'm talking to somebody who's dealing with financial burdens. I'm talking about somebody who's dealing uh, with family problems. You're you walking through some dangerous waters. But the good news is that while you're walking through the waters, God has already went ahead of you. And he's holding back the waters so that the waters don't close up on you. And you can walk around on, on dry ground. Isn't there something, y'all? Water to my left, water to my right, but I'm walking on dry ground. Y'all didn't get it. Let me run it by you again. Water to my left, water to my right, but I'm walking on dry ground. The third time's a charm. Water to my left, water to my right, but I'm walking on dry ground. Every now and then you ought to thank God for the peace he can give you in the midst of trouble. With trouble all around, you still have the strength to keep walking on dry ground. Hell on your job, but you're walking on dry ground. Trouble in your family, but you're walking on dry ground. Hills and tribulations, but you're walking on dry ground. Is there anybody here that thanks God that the waters didn't take you out, but God knows how to keep you in the midst of it. He can hold you. Is there anybody here today that's thankful for what God has done? And the text says, the text says, my brothers and sisters, that when you recognize that God has kept you, the text says finally that you ought to praise God for his deliverance look at it in verse 6 it says, it says blessed be the Lord who has not given us over as prey to their teeth in other words my brothers and sisters it says that every one of us ought to live with some type of gratitude we ought to bless the name of God because he has not given us over as prey to their teeth y'all didn't catch it Scripture says that Satan is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Uh, the Bible says that, that Satan desires to have Peter that he might sift him as wheat. In other words, my brothers and sisters, if it was up to Satan, Satan would tear apart our lives, tear apart our hope, tear apart our joy. But the text says that he can't do it because... God has not given you over. I thought I had some help here that, that God has not given you over 
but God has kept you in his hands so that when Satan would rip you apart God says in his word that he who is in my hand no man can pluck out and I've got to get out of here now I really didn't mean to go this way I was trying to teach on stewardship but, but I got to thinking about how good God has been to me I got to thinking about how many times trouble was all around but God still gave me peace and because of that I've got to give God for glory because the text says that our help is in the name of the Lord what that means is that when you don't know where you can find your help from that God will be your help and that's why I'm going to lift my eyes to the hills from which comes my help oh of my help comes from the Lord shake a neighbor by the hand come on and encourage him today come on I know it's homecoming weekend I know it's fall break but since we in the house today go on and shake their hand and say neighbor I don't know what you're going through but neighbor I got a feeling that everything is going to be alright y'all got to excuse me here I know I'm supposed to act like I've been to school but when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me it puts clapping in my hands stomping in my feet because if it had not been for the Lord I don't know where I'd be he kept my enemies away he let the sun shine through on a cloudy day and if it had not been for the Lord I'm there today but one more time shake a neighbor just one last time and say neighbor I got good news we've been there in there for the night y'all gotta excuse me don't got good to me but yeah it's coming in the morning late in the midnight hour God 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 is gonna turn it around is there anybody here that knows that he'll turn it around so if you see me dancing I'm alright if you see me crying I'm alright if you see me jumping I'm alright because God has been so good God we're standing all over the building But I thank God for his keeping power that he knows how to keep you. I thank God for his power. Every now and then you just ought to have some gratitude for what God has done in your life. I want to extend an invitation today for someone to give your life to Christ. If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, tell me where would I be? I want to extend an invitation for you to give your life to Jesus Christ want you to give your life to Jesus Christ today. 
have a relationship with the church home, I invite you today to come. If the Lord is moving on your heart, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I really don't know where I would be. I want to invite you today to come. If he's moving on your heart today, would you come? There's nothing like having a relationship with him for yourself. I invite you today to come. Would there be one today? If it had not been for the Lord on my side, would you come today if he's moving on your heart? Tell me where would I be? Lift it up, church. He let the sun shine through a cloudy day. Rock me in the cradle of his arms. He rocked me in the cradle of his arms. He knew. When he knew I had been battered and torn. So if it had not been Everybody sing it if it had not been. Let's sing it all over. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, tell me where would I be? Where would I sing it again if it had not? If it had not been, not been oh, for the Lord on my side, oh, my side. tell me where I don't know where I'd would be. I be? Oh, where? where would I? Come on, He kept my enemies away. He kept my The sun shine through a cloudy day. He rocked me, rocked me in the bed.
Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. 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 Let the people of God say amen. 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 All right, church. Well, we are uh, asked that you would keep all of our announcements in mind. And uh, we are preparing to come to the Lord's table uh, and to honor God for what he has done in our lives uh, through communion. I want you to know that if you have been baptized, you are welcome uh, to join us in communion uh, service um, as we celebrate what the Lord has done for us. So I invite you to be a part of that. If you must leave, uh, I would ask that you would do so um, very uh, quietly, uh, very quietly if you must leave. Uh, so please do so. Please greet others outside. But we are preparing uh, now to honor God uh, through our communion service. So I invite you uh, to be a part of that as we make those preparations at this time. So I invite you to come. Amen. Amen. For those remaining, our sisters are going to be in these two sections and our brothers are going to be over here as we prepare to look unto the Lord. Let us pray. 